and hopefully you can see my screen. So I'm going to be talking about work done in Oxford University, but I'm not presently employed in Oxford University, so this is a personal opinions only, but I can speak freely. Oxford is a complicated organisation. So there are four museums. There are the Bodleian libraries, which are dozens of libraries, and of course there are different research databases and uh, colleges and different special collections. If you have a topic you're interested in and you want to find what Oxford has, there are dozens, potentially hundreds of different search and browse interfaces you would have to use. And that's a shame because there are topics people are interested in for research or education or devotion or whatever that are themes linking different collections. And ideally these could be the basis of navigation. This could be how people navigate to collections rather than starting with an institution and then drilling down to find what specific things it has. But then we'd need a representation of the world. We need a representation of the historical world and worlds of folklore and mythology and entities and relations between them. And we'd need dates and names and places. Uh, this would be a kind of skeleton on which we hang the information about our collections and, and crosses between collections. Um, but how are we going to get this, this skeleton? This is what's called a knowledge graph, and the knowledge graph underlies Google results, and Facebook has one. Um, uh, so there could be, Oxford could make one, there could be a national one for the sector, and the UK taxpayer could fund it, but Bear in mind, it'd be a huge project. We want to represent tens of millions of things, millions of places on the Earth's surface, and billions, literally, of relations between them. So one approach is to say, well, someone's already made this. That's what Wikidata is. It's not ideal for our, our purpose, but we can add to it. We can edit it, and we can build it uh, better. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, so it's, uh, Wikidata already has links into thousands of different authoritative uh, academic sources and it kind of brings together uh, many kinds of database and authority file uh, already. Um, so a mundane example of what we can do is that there's published in Oxford the Benezit Dictionary of Artists uh, and there's artists in the local museum who are in, uh, who have biographies in Benezit but you wouldn't find one from the other. You'd have to be searching both websites, um, but uh, with information about the collection in Wikidata, we can just ask Wikidata for the Benezit biographies of artists in this collection, and then that table of data can go into a third-party app or could go into the museum website to give context to make it more educational. In my work, I shared not huge data sets from a variety of sources, see about a variety of kinds of things, and some of it was uh, bibliographic and some biographical, but mostly about artworks. And this is now available in all of the platforms that are Wikidata driven, which we've seen uh, some earlier in, in earlier presentations. I really like Reasonator. This is an overview of what Wikidata knows about any given topic. And so if you look for, say, the Buddha, one aspect of knowledge about the Buddha it has is a list of artworks that depict the Buddha. So you can see a list and you'll see things in the Bodleian, the Ashmolean, in there, um, uh, and in other platforms. A side benefit I want to mention is that there are already images from collections on Wikimedia Commons, the digital media archive. Some have been shared by the institutions themselves, some by visitors. Their form of engagement is they take a photo and they share it and they describe it and maybe it can be used to illustrate Wikipedia articles. There's a scant description there. Once there's collection data in Wikidata, that can automatically drive this entry in Commons. So we get a much richer set of information. We get links into the, the specific catalogue of the source institution and it's multilingual. So if I look at this same page with a different language setting on my browser, it translates most of the interface. I can't translate the English description, but it's, this is a truly multilingual uh, representation of this data about the artwork and the person depicted and the institution. And we can do comparisons. So we can uh, have artists in common between different collections. This is uh, objects depict, uh, so, uh, things depicted in artworks in different collections. Um, things that you just couldn't do with the museum websites on their own. Uh, we've seen the mention of astrolabes earlier on, uh, so you can start with one specific type of thing, and I'm grateful to the Science Museum and the History of Science Museum and the Adler Planetarium for sharing some uh, uh, catalogue information uh, with links into the specific entries in their catalogue. And uh, the, the challenge has been 
reconciliation, reconciling a set, a, a data set, um, especially where there's names, not authority files, or where the source data is itself inconsistent. That takes a lot of time. But once that work is done, it's a tiny amount of work, it's minutes of work to make these visualizations like a, a timeline of, of creation of astrolabes or a chart of time versus diameter of astrolabes, things that the museum's websites cannot do. And the museum websites and the uh, catalogues don't have biographical information, say, about the inventors, but Wikidata can have that. So it's far beyond what the museums uh, can do. So I just want to get across, Wikidata isn't replacing existing catalogues. There is a surface level of data we can share from the catalogues and then create links back to the authoritative information. Was Wikidata complete? For anything I asked it, absolutely not. And even things about Japanese history, I had to add some stuff myself, but then that information is useful to someone else who say it's incomplete for their purpose, but they will add more to make it fit for their purpose, and then someone else adds more for that. So the, the way it, it creates a division of labor is one of the amazing things about Wikidata. And I want to say, uh, emphasize it's a huge workforce. It's more, it's uh, like 25,000 active uh, contributors to Wikidata. It's, it's a vast workforce. And my project was a pilot project, but it's turned out to be the most sustainable, long-term sustainable museum discovery project because this is now part of Wikidata's knowledge graph. It's updated. I don't know how, with what interfaces people will explore museum collections in a generation's time, but I know we can lay down now the abstract pathways and the relation between things that will enable those interfaces now with linked open data. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Martin. I love that statistic about more people being involved with Wikidata than there are in the University of Oxford. <laughs> um, we've got a, another great question that's come through for you. Um, and it's, is it the fact that Wikidata does what museums databases can't do, or just that it would be too resource intensive for museums to do it? Uh, when I was talking to curators about scientific instruments like astrolabes, uh, I say, could you have profiles on your site of the inventors and creators of the, of the craftsmen and inventors who made these? And well, no, they just don't have the fields in their database. They are, they are curators of objects and they are not maintaining biographical information. And then bibliographic, what research published about these objects or about these inventors, that's a separate thing. That's a separate database. They don't manage that. So it's partly uh, they just don't do that kind of thing. Other people do write biographies and other people b build up bibliographies um, and Wikidata kind of brings together that work. Um, but also, yeah, museums could, uh, this is what Google Arts and Culture do, uh, create a really fancy wow inducing visual interface, but it's kind of a self-contained thing. Uh, it, they don't all link together and make something additive. W was Wikidata, some of the visualizations, they're not as impressive, but they're indefinitely repurposable and anyone can make them. Anyone can adapt an existing query. Uh, so there's a massive uh, drop to, for all the museums to do this and make these uh, fancy interactive or all seeing dancing interfaces is conceivable, but just vastly, vastly expensive. Whereas Wikidata makes it incredibly cheap. Great, thank you. Uh, we've got more questions than we're going to be able to take given the time, but you, there are two asking about um, the relationship between the Wikidata schema and CDOC CRM. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so uh, things can be described in a standard, formalized, rigorous ontology for describing cultural uh, uh, items or uh, can be described in Wikidata, which doesn't have a definite uh, schema and isn't so regular and is actually constantly changing. So we're putting in data about, say, pottery items before we're deciding what the ontology of pottery items is and how they're classified. Um, there are strengths to both those approaches. And yeah, there's a strong argument, oh, we've got to put everything into a rigorous vocabulary, but that's still cultural data uh, Wikidata is more flexible and connects more kinds of data. Uh, like I said, the, 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 um, not just to retrieve information about an object but, or type of object, but 
bibliographic information about research published about those objects. Wikidata is mainly a bibliographic database. Uh, so we're, we're, yeah, we're evolving ways to represent those things and re relation between those things. And that's an advantage, that's not a weakness. Great, thank you very much. And sorry if we're not able to get to all of your questions. Uh, I'm sure Martin can pick things up in the chat afterwards, but thank you very much. And I'll hand back to John, who's going to make you all do a bit more work again with another Mentimeter question. Okay, so the next question is um, around external IDs to pick up on the, some of the things that Martin was talking about. So we're asking you if you're currently using external IDs in your collection, and that could be within the collection management system, or it could be bridging through some other um, piece of middleware to bring those IDs alongside objects or records. Great, so I'll leave that going for a little bit. And um, next we're gonna hand over to um, Jane, who is the co-investigator on our Heritage Connect project, who will uh, tell you a little bit more about the things that we've been working on. <laughs> 